So we've got to talk about this study that still seems to be stuck in people's minds, despite the fact that the media frenzy is over. People are still asking us questions about this study that supposedly proved that people who did 16-8 intermittent fasting had a 91% increase in possibility of cardiovascular death. Oh yeah, it's super scary. Right? I mean, like, if that's all you saw coming through your newsfeed, I can understand where there would be like, what? Like a panic. But what I want to point out to you in this video is I want to break this study down so you understand why there were so many errors in this study and why this statistic of a 16 8 fast causing a 91% increase in cardiovascular death is completely erroneous. I want to have a conversation with you all about how do you navigate these headlines? Because as fasting is causing more and more people to lose weight and get off medication, we are going to see more media attention pointed at it destroying the, uh, the reputation of fasting um, because when people fast over time, they're typically not eating as much food and they're not taking as many medications, which takes two of the biggest industries out of the picture, big food and big pharma. So on this video, I'm gonna unpack this study, but I'm also gonna teach you how to think when it comes to study. I wanna talk about a science study. So a lot of us now get our current science news um, from social media. And I have to say that that's kind of cool. I mean, when, you know, 20, 30 years ago, if I was going to find a science article, um, you, it, it wasn't accessible. Uh, something called PubMed, which is like the Google for all science articles, was only accessible to medical schools and well actually it was many of the healthcare schools um, so because it was so expensive. So fast forward to where we are today, we're just sitting on our newsfeed, looking at our newsfeed and we get access to these studies. But the problem is, is that we don't understand what these studies are and how to decipher if it's a good study or it's a bad study. So real quickly, before I go in, to this intermittent fasting study, I want you to realize that all this, this 91% increase in cardiovascular uh, death was a headline. It wasn't even a completed study. So my first criticism and something for you to learn is that when a headline comes out, the first question I want you to ask yourself is, is it a peer reviewed art, uh, research study? If it is not peer reviewed, then by all means, whatever was found in that study hasn't been deemed true yet. And that's the case in this study, wasn't peer reviewed. So always ask yourself when you see that sensational headline, is it peer reviewed? The second problem is that we typically, this study would have been fallen into the category, if I was actually being gracious to it, uh, would have fallen in the category of observational. Observational means that they looked at a group of people in, in, and they were looking for certain patterns. And they were looking to see, have, in this particular study, what they did is they actually had them report in on a phone, like call in and answer a question, like a questionnaire. And the questionnaire wasn't just about fasting. It was a lot of questions about a lot of different things. And they did, they observed this group of people over a long period of time, like years. And what they actually found, or what they did, is that they only asked over looking at this group of people, large group of people, they only had them call in two times over several years. So it was, it was a very, you know, the study wasn't done with the right precision. That's what I want you to know. It was a very sloppy study. So the study wasn't vetted as a peer reviewed study. It was done in a very sloppy way. It was observational. 
Now, beyond that, we have other studies that I want to talk about, and then I'm going to go into the specifics on this, on this cardiovascular issue, and I want to show you some studies that are peer-reviewed and have been showing that, it, that fasting is incredible for cardiovascular health. But I also want you to know that there are other versions of studies like a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is when a bunch of researchers come together and look at the studies that have already been done on a topic. The best meta-analysis ever done on fasting that I am so grateful for, and you all should know it, and your doctor should know it, was put out by the New England Journal of Medicine. I spoke of this on the Mel Robbins podcast um, and when she interviewed me, and it showed that after reviewing several studies, the New England Journal of Medicine, which is the publication that most medical doctors will turn to for reliable science. They said that intermittent fasting was incredibly helpful for things like obesity, those of you lost weight know this, prediabetes, cardiovascular health, so they had already looked at those studies and seen that it was great for cardiovascular health, dementia, uh, and post-surgical situations. And, and some cancers, they did put some cancers in there. Um, we'll put the link to that study because it's such a good one and I've done some videos on it. So we'll put, and that was done a long time ago. So I'll put some of those in. So that was a meta-analysis and that was phenomenal. And I was so grateful that the New, New England Journal of Medicine had that. And then we have studies done on mice and we have studies done on humans. Mouse studies, which I quote often, um, what I think of with mouse studies is they like get you in the ballpark. So they like, it's like, okay, that's interesting. Now I'm not a mice, a mouse, but I, but if, if it's saying this in a mouse, let me apply it to my own life. So I like it because sometimes it's, it, you know, studies are hard and expensive to do. So when they do them on ma a mice, it's a little bit less expensive. So at least we have some sense in a mouse study that, uh, of what might actually equate to the human body. But then we do have human studies done on, on, on real humans. And the only challenge we have with human studies is most of the time they're not done on women. So one of the worst studies on intermittent fasting that ever came out was a study that was done um, showing that you didn't lose weight with intermittent fasting. And when I dove into the study to look at the study, the, the cohort, the group of people being studied was everything from a 17-year-old man all the way up to a 65-year-old woman. I'm a 54-year-old woman, and I got to tell you, please don't look at my metabolism in comparison to a 17-year-old man. So there, again, you can break these studies apart, which is what I'm trying to do for you and show you what's good and what's usable and what's not. So uh, in human studies, the problem is we don't typically take women out of, the, out of it and, and, and study us in isolation. So having said all of that, anytime you see a study, whether it comes from me or a, a pop, any popular podcasters or a news coming through your news feed, what I want you to do is to then ask yourself, how does this apply to me? We call it N of one. So when we look at a study, the N equals how many people are in the study. So for example, let's go back to this 91% cardiovascular death. There were over 20,000 people in that study. Okay, that was impressive. I mean, literally, that was the first question I asked myself when I saw that article. I was like, how many people did they study? Um, and it was like over 20,000. I was like, that's incredible. That's a great study. And then it went, I went on to say, how did they study? And that's when I, the study started to fall apart. And was it peer reviewed? It started to fall apart. So the N would have been 20,000. But what I want you to do, and I say this so much on my videos, and I hope you're getting it, and it's, I, I really I have a whole section on it in my new book that will come out in October of 2024, um, is be your own N of one. The only person that matters when it comes to this information is you and how it applies to your life. That is all that matters. So don't let a headline that was built off of horrible science totally take you away from this incredible free healing tool. What you want to ask yourself is, is this good science and how does this apply to me? Even if it is great science, I want you to ask yourself, how does it apply to me? And, it, and because, you know, even like we see this in couples when they fast together, in heterosexual couples, men will lose weight always faster than the woman. How am I put in the comments if that's you? 
So in that situation, does it mean because your partner, who's a man, you know, maybe that like he lost more weight than you did, so did it work for him and not for you? No, it just meant you had to find your way, which is why I wrote Fast Like a Girl. Okay, with all that out of the way, hopefully, hopefully you see that this was a sensational headline, and I do have some strong opinions on why these sensational headlines are coming out. And one of the reasons is because of our weight loss drugs. They are very profitable. And we would, you know, Big Pharma would love to get us all on them. And every time I sit down with somebody who's been on a weight loss drug that's spending over $1,000 a month on these weight loss drugs and, and powering through the adverse reactions and not knowing how they get off of them, when, they, when I ask them, what do they notice? They say, well... Um, I just, ain't, I'm not hungry anymore. And because I'm not hungry anymore, I'm starting to lose weight. So if you're on a weight loss drug, you can put that in the comment too. But that's a fasting lifestyle. Put in the comments if every, if as you've learned to fast, if your hunger's gone down, you could save yourself a thousand dollars a month by getting the same result, learning how to build a fasting lifestyle. So you have to understand, as sad as it is for me to report, you have to understand that there is profit in keeping us medicated. With that in mind, I wanna share four studies with you that were, are, have been done on the benefits of intermittent fasting and cardiovascular health, because this is important for you to know. So here we go, I'm gonna dive into the four. Okay, study number one. I, I, don't, I wanna make sure you get all, and I'll put all these links in here. So this was a 2018 study with people with prediabetes. And what they did is they either did an 18 hour fast um, or they did the every other day diet. You all know the, the every other day diet. It's like eat whatever you want one day and then the next day don't eat at all. You fast and then eat whatever you want. So they were given, you can go 18 hours of fasting every day or you can do the every other day diet. And they were, they were found prediabetic. And they found that fasting either one of these ways significantly improved both cardiovascular and metabolic health, including high blood pressure, insulin sensitivity, vascular inflammation, and appetite re regulation. There's our, that's our weight loss, our weight loss drug effect. And that the, these benefits, this is so important. These benefits happened whether the person in the study lost weight or not. So basically, this 2018 study proved that you can improve your metabolic and cardiovascular markers with these two styles of fasting that I just spoke about, whether you lose weight or not. Amazing. Now, we'd all like to lose weight, or many people, so you, know, you do get that added weight loss with, for a lot of you. Okay, 2020 study that it had people with metabolic syndrome, if they fasted 14 hours for 12 weeks, that over the 12 week period, so it's consistency over time, consistency, consistency, that the participants showed a significant improvement in cardiovascular health, including decreased blood pressure and arthrogenic blood lipids. So those are all the lipids that are causing cardiovascular problems. So there's a 2020 study showing that once again, fasting helps with cardiovascular health. Okay, but we don't stop there. 2014 study found that several kinds of fasting um, decreased cardiovascular risk and helped participants lose weight. I'll link these studies in a 2020 review. Okay, now you're a science expert, you got this. A review means a meta-analysis. They looked at many studies. That's what a review is. It said that close to a dozen other studies show that Fasting decreases the risk of cardiovascular disease. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. So I could go on and on and on about the incredible science showing that fasting improves not just our cardiovascular health, but improves our metabolic health. It also improves our microbial health, which is a whole nother conversation. I could show you study after study, and it kills me that the media took a hold of this one line and that there are many people today 
that are no longer fasting because of an uh, of a of a sensational headline. And if you know those people, send this video to them. And there are many social influencers um, that are 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 staying in in lanes and telling you they're eat this way, don't eat that way. And I'm here to show you how to think for yourself when it comes to health and science and hormones. It's so important that we understand what works for us and, and get some kind of formula together that is going to help us navigate these very interesting times that we find ourselves in. So as always, put in the comments if that helps. Whew. I feel better having gotten that off my back. So thank you for listening. Um, and I just deeply appreciate you. And I hope all the content I put out there uh, moves your health forward and keep believing in yourself. I believe in you. I know what your body's capable. Um, and I know that it, one educated person can overturn many chronic diseases. So let's get you educated. Hope that helps. You wanna dive into autophagy more? Uh, I have a great video called uh, The Best Way to Extend a Fast and Boost Autophagy. So go check out that video. Once you click into this fasted state, somewhere in between eight to 12 hours, now the trick is how do we stay there longer?